If you're a fan of St. Louis Rams football, well, at least you got Missouri to root on. They're undefeated. That could certainly help you get through the rest of the NFL season. Jason Horowitz, Ian Eagle, with you in the end zone, presented by Sony. Uh, we've talked about this week the best teams, the biggest surprises. This has to be the, the most disappointing segment, uh, literally. And, and when you talk about the most disappointing uh, teams, of course the Rams, the Raiders, the Lions, and the Bengals, the only one of those four that haven't made a change so far, right. except to bring guys back like Chris Henry, and they just signed Cedric Benson. Well, I was in St. Louis uh, this past weekend, and obviously you knew that change was in the air. It was a tension convention out at their training facility. Scott Linehan, we sat down with him on Friday told us why he made the change to Trent Green and you know, basically told Solomon Wilcox, and I look, I'd be crazy and considered crazy if I didn't make a change. We're 0-3. Everybody's looking for something different. I had to do this. Now, Mark Bolger and the rest of the offense would disagree. Stephen Jackson came forward and said, this is not the right move. Mark Bolger is not the problem. And Jim Haslett, the new head coach, Linehan replaced, has gone back to Mark Bolger. So obviously there was a faction within that locker room that felt this was an overreaction by Linehan and a desperate move. Uh, St. Louis has a lot of talent. Steven Jackson is an excellent football player. Torrey Holt is a perennial pro bowler. There are defensive players on that team that they spent high draft picks on, Carriker, Long, free agents they brought in, Witherspoon, that they believe can come together. Jim Haslett gets the job. This defense was ranked dead last in the NFL. That kind of shows you well, where this team was my, at. That's my problem with that. Jim Hazlitt, by the way, is a great coach. And what he had to, you know, people talk about the coaching job he did to take over a 2-13 and 13 New Orleans, 2-14 and 14 New Orleans team and turn them into a division winner and yep. they won a playoff game. He's a fiery guy. But, he was look, a fiery but, player. But, He's a fiery coach. And earlier in the week we talked with, with Pete Prisco uh, about how good of a, a job he did after Hurricane Katrina. They had to deal with gangs in Houston and, and all kinds of things that they had to deal with, uh, which may have been his best coaching job, even though they went 3-13. and 13. He has to do that here, not, not so much with the outer influences, but getting his guys to believe that they can actually win a football game. Like you said, they have talent, but that defense is horrible, and it has been horrible for two years. It's his defense, Ian. This is true. Now, Clark Judge had a column here on CBSSports.com pointed out that, look, you don't have to have all the players like you as a head coach. There are many coaches that have been successful that – have not had that kind of relationship with their players, but they have to respect you. And I think that's where Linehan uh, lost the players. The respect level was gone. Jim Hazlitt will have the respect of the players. I believe that to be the case. If you're looking at his defense, there's no reason he should have gotten this job. Right. But ultimately, he was the right leader for this team. He got the job over Al Saunders, and they decided that Hazlitt had the right demeanor to lead this team and try to turn this thing around. He, he's been a, he's, you know, he has been a winner in the past, so maybe that's what it is. Meanwhile, you, you know, another change this week with the Raiders. And so, really? Yeah. You th- Did I mean, that well, finally I mean, happen? Three weeks that we've been waiting for it. Finally it happened. Was that Tuesday. bizarre? Yeah. It, well, I mean, we've talked about it last week. It's something that it's a once-proud franchise. Al Davis, a guy who you have great respect for as of a guy course. who's covered you, the NFL for 10 years. You have to and, and for what he's accomplished. All those things that we talked about last week, but the Raiders – I mean, Al Davis calling out Lane Kiffin. Lane Kiffin saying, oh, this never happened. I mean, it's unreal, the yeah. two different sides of the story here. Yeah, and we don't have enough time to get into it and all the details. Right now, let's focus on the football. The Raiders have not been awful out there on the field. They very well should have beaten Buffalo in the prior week. They have not embarrassed themselves this year. They're not in the same classification as the Rams who have been dominated in four weeks or the Bengals where the wheels have just completely fallen off. I think there's still some positives out of the Raiders with their young running back, with their young quarterback, with a defense that has played hard for Coach Ryan. I, I don't think they're in dire circumstances like some of the other disappointments in the NFL. I, I'm not sure Tom Cable, though, is a guy that... that you, what, I don't who know knows? Who knows what I you're going to get out of that situation. That's, so that's another one. Now, when you look at the other two teams that uh, are winless, Detroit, well, obviously Oakland's not winless, but Detroit, Cincinnati, both winless. Which team has less hope moving forward? Well, I mean, you can cover Detroit. This is your team. <laughs> this is the team you followed it. as a youngster. I can tell you from a Cincinnati standpoint that this had been building. You know, I can't say I'm surprised at this. There is talent on this team, but it lacks direction now. And just the fact that 
They, they had Chris Henry. They got rid of Chris Henry because he had become a nuisance. And guess what? They need a wide receiver. Let's bring Chris Henry back. Come on. They just brought Cedric Benson Silliness. in. Silliness. It, He's it, just finished a four-game suspension himself. They're becoming almost like the Raiders used to be, where yeah. they, they'll just bring in projects and cross their fingers and hope for the best. Uh, the Bengals need to, to completely overhaul their team. I feel badly for Carson Palmer, who I think is still an excellent quarterback and is now at a stage where he realizes that he's on the road to nowhere in Cincinnati. Maybe that's why he didn't want to play with the elbow injury this past week uh, against Cleveland. Detroit, give me, uh, give me your thoughts there. Look, quick. If, if, you know, taking down, firing Matt Millen is not going to help the team immediately because you still have the same players there now as you did before. They're 0-3. They can't stop anybody. Uh, and, and that is certainly something that is a huge problem when you look at any team. You're not going to score 35 points a game to beat your own defense, which is giving up 37 points a game. Matt Millen, okay, bad decisions. But that's not going to change this year. I think there's less hope in Detroit for this year than there mm. is in Cincinnati. Was that therapeutic for you? Did yeah, that help I at all? I got it out. Good. I got it out. Good. Uh, can we bring Rodney Pete back? Is he still available to I play? Think, I think he is. Uh, nothing wrong with John Kitna, but, uh, you know, Rodney Pete didn't throw those crucial interceptions every game. We'll see how it all plays out. Lions are back at it this weekend. Uh, Bengals are in Dallas. Yikes. All right, folks. For Ryan Eagle, I'm Jason Horowitz. We'll catch you next week on The Enzo, presented by Sony. Take care. I should bill you for this therapy. Yeah, I mean, listen, get a couch up here. We'll all feel fine. <laughs>